Um, so what we're talking about tonight is War Without Borders. Um, and the concept here, um, and a kind of tagline, collaborating to build a global village. Uh, anyone who's kind of looked into some of the sustainable movements that are happening or the localization process where um, people are trying to become sustainable in a smaller area as opposed to relying on um, large networks of shipping or large international things. So we're kind of talking about how do we start to make global villages happen. Um, so what we want to talk about here at Open Up is things that are happening, and then we'll kind of talk about things we hope happen and things that we want to see happen as we, as we develop them. So what's currently happening is a website. And the website is my idea. Um, when I, about two years ago, I came back from travels um, abroad and I kind of seen a, a different thing and I thought, well, it seems really absurd that we keep defining ourselves um, based on our country, based on our nationality, as who gets what, who can have access to technologies, who gets to drink clean water, all these sorts of things that seem to be defined by some pretty archaic models, colonial models and everything. So the, the website begins as a place where I can start to share this and start to take other people who are writing amazing articles um, that I'm reading and get to put them up and get people to become aware of some interesting stuff that's happening. Um, next we've got, um, I'm going to be traveling. So this website's not something I'm going to think about and blog about. Um, from my chair, I'm going to go down to South America. I'm going to join different communities, uh, different farming projects, try to learn the sustainable agriculture, the sustainable building projects that they're working on, and things that can then be put into work in other places. Um, there's a lot of places around South America right now that have gone off the grid as far as water, have gone total solar power, um, have been able to break away from a lot of the government controls that have restrained um, growth in the past uh, several hundred years. And so I want to go kind of be involved, and that's what's going to feed into the website. Um, and then what started to happen is this idea that I was talking about sounded really plausible, that people could hear about this, but um, what people want to know is what are, what are we going to do with this? I said, well, what we're going to do is we're going to donate this money. We're going to give money to uh, people in these countries, not because, uh, not in the form of doles and handouts of uh, some water, some food, uh, but actually going to the source of the problem and being able to pinpoint what they need done uh, for their community to function better. And this got people really excited, so I brought up the next point, which is um, we decided let's go open source, uh, and this is collaborative. And so people started bringing a lot more than I was bringing to it. I said, I'll have a blog, um, people will donate, this will work out really well. And people said, well, they could do a lot more. Um, and we're going to talk later tonight about a game concept um, that Scott James is going to talk about, kind of describing what we're doing. But um, for now, just kind of the basics is, a donation website. All right, but then what it becomes and what we hope to develop. Um, this website would then, when people accessed it, it would take you to various villages. It would take you to places and it would give you a description of what's going on. And it would let you know what that community had decided was relevant. Maybe it's water rights. Maybe they recently lost water rights because the government privatized water to a foreign international um, corporation. Uh, the corporation is now charging, um, a, for example, in the uh, Ecuador, they're charging the same price for water that we get here, except they make $100 a month. And so you can see how really quickly losing water rights means your village falls apart. Uh, and so uh, the idea here is to go let you know what they need in irrigation, in water, in this, that, the other thing, and to let people pinpoint their donation uh, to the project as they see it, as opposed to just sort of dumping it. Um, this is really exciting. And then I'll let him talk about more, but an online game that a lot that rewards players with content. I'm sure you guys can think of many different applications and games that are running right now uh, in social networking groups where people are getting little uh, cool, um, basically content, little memorabilia that says you play this game, you pay money. Um, they're really excited about it, but instead of just having it be paid money that just floats out into the pockets of a for profit, uh, it would go to the specific or general donations that would sort of uh, be spread back into the projects. Um, and finally, this would allow us to set up a network of villages. And what we mean by this is not only villages in uh, other countries, um, but actually around here. And, and as urban spaces become more localized, as groups like this start to develop, we start to create village communities all across the world, and we want to communicate well. And so this is sort of the idea of moving off the grid, but staying on the cloud. So not being connected to um, sort of a, a long term, you have to pay to stay in your location, but to be able to sustain yourself in the location, uh, and then connect in the internet and to stay very much um, on topic with what's going on. Okay, real quick, traditional charity model, just to get, just do a run through. You've got these classic ways of doing. Oh, sorry. We got private donations, business charitable donations for write-off. 
and I call it crisis fundraising. There's been a horrible famine, give money. There's been this, that, the other thing. Fear, give money. And this is a really common way we approach our donations. And these feed into the massive international charities, Red Cross, Children's International, Save the Children, and we say, I hope that goes somewhere. I really hope that does something for these people. Um, I've given them money and, you know, and that works out. And what ends up happening a lot of times is they don't attack any sources of poverty. They're not approaching any of the infrastructure that's failing to work. Uh, they're not approaching uh, questions of jobs um, and, the, and sort of the loss of autonomy of these uh, communities. They're giving money to the symptoms, right? They're giving rice, they're giving water but the people will need these again very quickly. Uh, and a lot of the overhead goes into the organization to advertise itself, to support itself, and to continue doing what it has to do. It makes sense. It's the old model. Um, so we've got a new model. And uh, oh, anyway, uh, we've got income sources for the new model. Private donation still works. Business, charitable donation still works. But we move away from fear-based fundraising and move on to micro-lending. People can decide if maybe they don't want to just give money. Maybe they want to donate to a project and they see a result from it. They see that a group wants to do a weaving project. They want $400 for a new weaving machine. They donate the money and within a year, they're starting to make a profit and the money comes back. Not a huge amount, but it's, you know, it's another process to get money down there. Um, and then the online game, which is sort of the last one that has come into the mix but is really becoming important. Um, this feeds into World Without Borders. Once again, project specific, they decide. Community decides what's important. Um, people like me uh, and other people I'm going to involve in it will go down and find that out from them. And then finally, um, we're going to support sustainability so that they're able to stay off um, the grid and not reconnect with the problem. And the breakdown works more like this. We are producing most of the profit generated into sources, the attacking the source of poverty, uh, building infrastructure, getting water rights back, doing all the uh, important things like that. We're not attacking the symptoms because that gets done for the most part, and a lot of people are actually capable of doing that. Once you can grow rice, you can give your friends rice, right? so that would work well. Um, and then over organizational overhead gets a small amount of funding from the overall, and actually takes a larger amount from the game we plan to build on the side. And so trying to hopefully get as much away from using our own organization to um, support ourselves. Oh, and this is where I have to transition over to him. Hi, everyone. Now the fun part. Um, I'm Sky James. Uh, I'm an illustrator, graphic designer, and got brought on board uh, for the game aspect. Uh, when Adam approached me about this, it was so exciting and just was so powerful. Uh, it really inspired me that evening that he was telling me about it to capture that moment. And I drew a picture of that right here. Um, for all of you can see it, he's kind of polished up his speech a little bit more in pitch. Um, needless to say, I was speechless. Um, so when we finally calmed down, we were able to talk about it, I was thinking to myself, what can I do, what can a goofy illustrator like myself do to uh, help with such an outreach? Um, and then it hit me. Like that, it didn't. Um, Facebook. I think all of us in this place have a Facebook account, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and if you don't have one, then I'm sure you know someone who has one. And uh, they probably have friends and family who have one. But I'm here to tell you that a lot more people have them. Like, a lot of people. Like, a lot, a lot, a lot of people. Like, everybody has them. Uh, and actually, here's some numbers on that. Uh, as of July 10th, 2010, over 500 million people were active users on Facebook. Now, how that actually works for us in our business model, what we're doing here is Facebook actually does generate revenue for certain people, and that's through Facebook games. You all know them, you all love them. Getting invites for them all the time. Now let's talk about games for a second. From a very young age, uh, we are approached with games. Uh, if you're 35, or younger, you've probably been playing games your entire life. Uh, from when we're children to when we're teenagers uh, to when we're young adults, we're playing games and loving them. Now, how does that work in Facebook world? As of right now, the top four games, Cafe World, has over 21 million people playing it a month. Mafia Wars has over 23 million people playing it. 
Texas Hold'em has over 33 million people playing it. And Farmville, the big enchilada, has over 61 people, people playing it right now. Uh, the creator of Farmville, Brian Reynolds, one of the head directors of it, um, was quoted in the LA Times of saying, three to five percent of those people who play that game actually pay money for goods in the game. These aren't real goods. These aren't things that you could uh, at all. These are just little things you're paying real world money for. Everyone else uh, generates about a penny a day, and that includes people who do pay. Now you put that for a year, penny a day, equals $3.65. Now you times that by the amount of people playing the game, that's 61 million over a year. That's 222 million a year. That's a lot of money. We aren't expecting numbers like that. <laughs> That's huge. But you get a little piece of that pie, and you can do a whole lot. What that is, is Adam and other people like him going down and working in South America and other places, uh, generating content so we all know about it, what's going on, what's happening, gets sent back to people, Designers, people who generate content in-game, let you know what's going on in a creative and fun way in a game environment, which then talk who are affluent and socially conscious and looking to help. I truly believe that. They give money. That money goes back down. And people like him. Uh, and the whole thing just keeps going around and around, just like the world. Uh, and that's it. That's what we got. <laughs> That's in a nutshell, everyone. Oh, hard to close, though. Um, as far as people are hearing us talk about the game, there's no definitive answer on what this game will look like. But right. um, just like some background, he's done his own design on Facebook games, and it actually has a successful. He did the art for successful <laughs> Facebook game, so we're pretty sure that that's going to come along in its due time. But that's also part of the collaboration. Artist, writer, no designers in the team yet. So we come to these kind of situations to talk to people and say there's a whole huge space for collaboration from every single field. Um, and we need everyone. And the project seems pretty self-explanatory at this point, I think, right? So anyway, now I will uh, say I'm done. Questions? Yes.